Welcome to the latest episode of The Doctor and the Chef. Chef, how are you? Very well, thank you, Doctor. Great to be here. Great. Now, uh, one of the things that we like to do is to really showcase exactly what it's like to be able to drink wine and be approachable is to learn to drink wine like a... Wanker. Wanker. <laughs> because the important thing of drinking wine like a wanker is that you can uh, join them. Well, absolutely. And we would like to give you some tips so that you have in your armory all of the necessary terminology and behaviours that are required to drink wine like a wanker. Or you could call them out, of course. Well, you could join them or call them out. Yep. It's one or the other, yep. isn't it, really? Now, you can't beat them, join them. No, that's that's, that's very true. Now, uh, we've, all, we've all been there, seen that wine wanker out there. Now, Chef, can you show us the, the, the first stages of... Uh, how to drink wine like a wanker? Well, absolutely. It'll be my pleasure, Doctor. Uh, well, to start with, you've got to have a sensational device to open your wine. And today, we're using a corkscrew, uh, which happened to be a Christmas present for one of us, uh, which basically is a flick knife yeah. uh, combined with a corkscrew. It is pretty pretty fancy, but I'm not sure particularly how useful this is. Uh, I mean, it cuts the thing open. Step one quickly. worked okay, which yes. is to remove the foil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that bit. That was um, pretty good. I'm quite... Uh, I'm, usually, I prefer a waiter's friend that's known. Now, now, one of the things we're doing it this way is that probably may not be as good to do it in front of your guests, and perhaps instead, oh, okay, no, there you go, no problems. You, you could do it a bit more elegantly. Um, <laughs> well, I went a little hard on that one, but uh, first step is to remove. So, having gently and professionally opened the bottle of wine, uh, close your corkscrew so you don't do any damage to yourself. No, you don't want to stab um, yourself. Is have a bit of a quick, a quick sniff of the cork, oh. people will think something mysterious is going mm, on. So smells like wood. Step one is like... Can you do a, this with a screw cap? No, you, well, there's nothing to really screw. But the next point I would make is you... Is you're having to really screw? <laughs> <laughs> the next point I'd like to make is you then, uh, with a wine with any age on it, red in particular, yeah. certainly no bother, no bother with the champagne or white is, Shall we decant the wine? Yep. Good and point. so the, the point of decanting the wine, now, shall we decant the wine? Any did, discussion around decanting is going to signal immediately that you have some further knowledge about what to do with the wine. Now, did you bring a decanter? Oh, the bloody decanter. I had one job. Yep. Luckily, uh, we have this uh, oversized uh, wine well, glass. It's good because any vessel will do. And in fact, this is going to illustrate my point slightly better to a, to a degree, Doc. We will give it a shot. All right, so we just take the wine, uh, we pour it in. It doesn't actually matter if it's vigorous or gentle. Um, I, this is a quite a this is quite a young uh, red, so we can probably go in as hard as we like. Two thousand and nine, so it's almost it's ten years old. Yeah, but what you're doing here is you're you're waiting for the sediment to be caught. Any sediment that's in the bottle will be caught in the shoulder of the wine. Yeah, yeah. Here. This is how so you're when, supposed to do it. Yeah. So when you pour it out a little bit more slowly, and we're just having a look now to see good. what sediment is being caught there and. There's not actually much sediment in this glass bottle. Now, so now, when you when you look at the out. decanters these days, you've got uh, lots of different types of decanters. You can even get the decanters that look like piss bottles. Oh, you, something like this, you mean, Doc? <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. Now, I don't know what that what's very expensive that, piece. It of really clean, doesn't so. matter what sort of decanter. No. So you could use the business glass wine. Absolutely, glass, business uh, card wine glass. Yeah, you all you're doing is increasing the surface area mm. exposed to oxygen. So it doesn't actually matter uh, whether you're using a yep. piss bottle, sure. whether you're using a, uh, a specially designed thing, or just a jug. Now, now one of the things you can do is you can actually uh, double decant. Well, double decanting, I mean, now you're talking, if you start saying words like double decant, people are starting to listen. People who know something about yep. wine are starting to listen. Very good. So, so what you do to double decant is you just pour this back in through a funnel. We won't do it now because it no, it'll no, go no. everywhere. It'll go everywhere. But you'd pour it back in through a funnel into the bottle mm. uh, and you'd pour it out again. Oh. And after that, you would wash out the bottle with, with uh, plain water, just tip that water out. And, and then uh, do it a second time. Yeah, do it a second time. Now, the other way you could do this if you're a real wanker is you could actually just, um, if, if you've got some less than salubrious uh, guests that are coming for dinner and you actually thought that the, the wine actually well, so has got some really good, really good aromas and just you can't think do that that, that might be going better. So, so what you would do is just put that to one side won't know any different. No, and then they you go will, down to the local will. bottle shop and you get yourself. No, no, you right. just can't and do you this. Just refill the bottle. No, no, this Re is not. This is, this is not kosher. This with is not some kosher. premium reserve Shiraz from. Look, we know what that rubbish. Oh, it's great stuff. We know what that rubbish tastes like. And then like. they won't know at all what. Well, Everyone knows the oh. difference. Everyone knows the difference. No, because it'll come in a great bottle, and then you just stick the, the cork back in like no. that, oh and people will go, "Oh my god, how good look at that! It could be a Grange." Could be no, anything. no, this is just this is not not okay. Anyway, no, okay, right. so step 
One is to camp the wine. Now, yep, maybe don't do that. No, no, I don't think you need to. Uh, you know, like the, the, the doctor's yeah. recommendations are dangerous and uh, could get you into a lot of strife. It is pretty now, funny though. Uh, have a go at this. So, so now, what you want to do now is you can get continue the, to increase the surface area. You can, Get, get a, a swirl, swirl on. Going. Now with the wine glass, uh, the, the massive wine glass, I oh, recommend. Oh Jesus! Two hands. Oh yeah, no, no, this is very dangerous. Really All right, let's not. Let's right. skip that so process. Now, now, what you do is, um, you can pour it into the glass. Okay, okay. yeah, it's going yeah. well. Yeah. And, okay, and what I'll you can do, go. hang on, what you can do to start with, and this is really important, is you can actually get a really good swirl yeah, up yeah, there, okay. and you can and you can do it in oh. the next glass because then you can coat this one too. Okay. And then, All right. right. That oh, seems like overkill to me. Hello. Hello. Excellent. So oh, you can see this is some of the negatives. Of this is some of the negatives of having the. the oh, mine's a bit out. Yeah. So um. <laughs> so so uh, what's the, the next process that we go through here is we want to be able to nose the wine. Well, nosing the wine, they say. Yeah. Um. Look now, uh, that basically for any amateurs out there is smelling the wine. Now now. You well, also, no, you've all seen that the, done. Nosing the wine, but it's really really important. The way you should nose the wine is you've got to look down and to the left. To the left. What on earth? You, no, because you have to do it down to the left. I saw. I'm, I'm not sure it makes any difference at all. It makes a uh, great. If you go the other way, different don't work. No, that's not true. It doesn't work. No, no. I saw, Master you Sommelier are, on YouTube said no, this is the way I have to do it. So it I'm not sensing any difference. You know what? I don't think it makes any difference at all. I'm not particularly keen on look down to the left. But I tell you what, if you do look down to the mm. left, you're going to look like a wanker anyway. So, so what, you, what you want to do though is you want to get some of those tasting notes, the, the nosing notes. What are the, you've what got does to have, smell like? That's right. You've got to have a few key words up your sleeve, and yep. they are things like pickled carrots, uh, breakfast wines, well, breakfast burnt chestnuts, wine thing, the breakfast cigar wine. box. How, it doesn't smell like bacon and eggs, man. I think it does. No, well, I'm thinking more along the lines of tannins, Satsuma plums, uh, Look, that it, kind of you know big flavors. It doesn't really matter. There's big palette, words you can palette. use. Fruit, uh, whatever. But uh, <laughs> the important thing is that it's your smell and what reminds That's you right. of something. You, so you can say whatever you like. And if you want to say breakfast wine, yeah. go for it. Yeah, I, do it I, I say have a few key words up your sleeve. So it that's does, uh, point got, number two. I've got to say, it does freak out people at cellar door when you tell them that their <laughs> $60 bottle of wine reminds you of breakfast. Well, but, yeah, exactly. Right. I can so only imagine. Now, uh, the next stage is to uh, taste the wine. Well, absolutely. So let's, do, let's get that done. And of course, <laughs> and you need to continue to taste the wine in this aggressive way. When I was a child traveling through France with my parents, we ended up in a in a, in, 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 a, in rural France, and uh, we sat around a dinner table with some um, uh, with some people mm. that were wine makers, wine growers, and the old fellow who was uh, must have been in his seventies just started giving it that one, and I was. Almost fell off my chair. I mm. was absolutely transfixed yeah. by it. No, very but good. of course, what he's doing is aerating the wine. Oh, what right, we're okay. doing here is we're continuing to aerate Slurp, the wine. Slurping the slurping wine. Slurping the wine. So, so in terms of slurping the wine... Now, the more noise, the better. Yeah. <laughs> the, more, the more noise and the crazier, the crazier you behave, the more you're going to look like a wanker. <laughs> now, uh, I actually... That, that, that's probably over the top, but you could do that. <laughs> Now, one of the things that you could probably do if you over the top if you really over the top. if you really want to drive home that wine wanker issue, you need to learn how to spit. Yeah, what? Well, okay, well. so so spitting is uh. critically important at the start when you, when you first have that taste with your with your wine wanker. Yes, yeah. but you're also looking you're, incredibly professional. What? You don't need to drink it. You're just you're just no, tasting no. it and spitting it. So what you would do is, is I drink so take, much wine, I don't even need to consume you, this one. First bit is the nose. The second bit is the the first taste, and you want to. Air right in your mouth, you know, and then you want to spit it, and the third time you're doing a little bit more. So what you do? <laughs> oh, doctor, nice form, just oh, like that. Now, chef, give us a shot. See if you can do it. The third time, you want to take a little bit and leave a little bit in your mouth, apparently, and then it is perfect. Oh, good, very good. Very good. <laughs> now it's all over me. That that it's is all... the sort of way that you can. Uh, drink wine like a wanker. It will give you all of those different mm. notes, experiences that people love. Yes, absolutely. And uh, you can take that and, and, and use that. Absolutely. So that's how, in summary, really, it's uh, you want to open the bottle of wine with a spectacular corkscrew. Mm. You want to uh, 
professionally extract the the, the, yeah. the cork, smell the cork yeah. because people will think there's some dark art yeah. going on. With decant it. the wine. Then decant the wine. Double decant the wine. Yeah. Should you expect yeah. to? Yeah. Grab uh, your bottle of uh, your box of. <laughs> no, wine. no, leave, no, leave no, your no, pocket. No, leave your pocket aside. Yeah. Then you want to you want to smell the wine mm. down and to the left, down and to the left. Examine the colour of the wine in the in the in the light to see if it's uh, dark or, or light. Just make some reference to that. That's right. Then you want to be able to do a bit of a slurp, a bit and of a slurp and a spit, a bit of a slurp and a, and a good conversation yep. about how it tastes, confidently and forthrightly said, and you are then a one hundred percent certified wanker. wine wanker. So that'll give you some good tips. So, ladies and gentlemen, the press and everyone else, if you want to drink wine like a wanker, make sure you do it like that. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Another episode of the Doctor and the Chef. Follow us on, <laughs> like and subscribe. I can subscribe and come to our uh, friendship.